girls, so I just got back from Australia. I'm guessing you're here because you'd like to go to Australia or you're thinking about going to Australia. If you are thinking of going to Australia, do it because it is amazing. It's also a massive country um, and it's hard to know where the hell you're going to start planning it. I'm going to try and answer a few questions um, and pass over my knowledge from having just been there so that if you go, you know, you can make the best use of your time um, and your money because no one likes to waste their money or their time. So the first question people ask me is where do I go? What route do I take? For first time backpackers um, like myself, um, in Australia the most popular route to take is from Cairns to Sydney or vice versa from Sydney up to Cairns and that's the east coast of Australia. There are so many amazing places to visit on the east coast um, and such contrasting places as well. So let's have a little breakdown of what's on the east coast. So we flew into Cairns. In Cairns you've got um, access to the Great Barrier Reef, so snorkelling trips and diving access. You can't go in the sea in Cairns um, because of jellyfish at certain times of the year and sharks. Um, so they've got a massive lagoon and everyone chills out there. You've got Uncle Brian's Rainforest Tour where you go and see the waterfalls um, and some of the wildlife. Um, we rented a car and went to Hartley's Crocodile Farm, I think it was called. I'll link it below. Um, and there you can see the crocodiles, snakes, um, wallabies. Is it wallabies? I think it's what, yeah, um, someone actually on our snorkeling trip recommended it and he was a local which is always nice because um, sometimes the more touristy places um, are more expensive um, and maybe not as good experience. If you're looking for nightlife in Cairns um, or you're a backpacker um, and you want to know where everything's at, it's mainly based around a place called Gilligan's Backpackers which I'll link below. We stayed there um, and the accommodation was actually pretty decent. Um, they've got a club there as well, um, a massive bar, a pool um, and every evening there's like a different event going on. So continuing down the east coast um, you've got Mission Beach uh, which is home to the best skydive in Australia um, so if you're interested in an adrenaline activity um, yeah you can land on the beach with that skydive which is amazing. Then you've got Townsville uh, where you've got access to Magnetic Island. Further on down you've got a little town called Early Beach which is really really cute um, and that's where you have access to the Whit Sundays. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the Whit Sundays, it's one of the major attractions on the East Coast, the well known Whitehaven Beach which is absolutely stunning. Um, you can get boats from Early Beach um, and sail around the Whit Sundays, you can do day trips like two day trips, three day trips and I'm sure you can do like week ones. We did a three day one which I have done a post on on my blog so if you want to know details about what it's like and what you do, um, yeah, my blog link will be of course be below. Next you've got um, Harvey Bay and Rainbow Beach, um, both of which you can access Fraser Island which is the world's largest sand island. If I was going to go to one of the two um, bays to access Fraser Island, I would go to Rainbow Beach because they have um, these sand dunes which make for a beautiful photo. So yeah, you can you get a boat across to Fraser Island. Island, um, and you can do two or three day tours. Again I've done a review of Fraser Island um, and our two day trip on my blog. Um, Fraser Island and Whitsundays um, are both expensive trips for backpackers um, but they are so worth it. You can't really do the East Coast without doing them. Next up you've got Noosa a little bit further down which is beautiful, um, got beautiful beaches um, and great for nightlife. Brisbane which is a city um, and there you've got like art galleries, museums and um, you've got Brisbane Zoo which is um, a big zoo and a very popular zoo for like cuddling koalas. Next up you've got the Gold Coast where you've got Surfers Paradise and I'm sure if you like a party you would have heard of Surfers Paradise because that is where all the pub crawls, the bar crawls um, and the craziness goes on. Next we move from um, Queensland down to New South Wales where we reach Byron Bay. I loved Byron Bay. Byron Bay was exactly how I imagined Australia to be. When I arrived there I was just so excited. There were surfers everywhere, the sun was shining, they've got beautiful, beautiful beaches, waves, smoothies, ice creams, coconuts. There's a beautiful main beach and then there's a few if you walk further along um, and you can chill out, you can surf. Um, everyone pulls up their VW camper vans um, and it's just beautiful. If you get to stay there a while, um, you can do things like walk up to the lighthouse, which is a bit of a walk, but it's got a beautiful view and you can stand and take photos on the most 
easterly point of Australia. You can also kayak um, and they've got lots of pods of dolphins there. You'll find lots of arts and crafty shops, there's people busking on the streets, um, you've got all your vegan cafes um, and organic cafes. We did a festival called The Falls which is 20 minutes outside of Byron um, and we saw in the new year there which was amazing and I would really really recommend that if you do happen to be there at New Year. And then you've got Sydney. Sydney is beautiful. Sydney is massive um, and there is so much to see there so if you have time make sure you leave time for Sydney because we were there a week and feel like we didn't see half of it. Where do I start? You've got Botanical Gardens, the Opera House, you've got the Sydney Harbour Bridge, you've got the CBD, um, full and I mean full of food and amazing restaurants and shops. Beaches, so you've got Manly, you've got Coogee, you've got Bronte Beach, you've got famous Bondi Beach. If you have a chance, do the walk from Coogee to Bondi. Um, the scenery is amazing. You've also got Taronga Zoo, um, which is known as the zoo with a view. We actually rented a car, because um, we hadn't seen kangaroos yet in Australia, and we went to a place called Morissette, I will link it below, um, where you can see wild kangaroos and you can feed them. So that's kind of the stereotypical East Coast route um, and some of the highlights. If time is on your side um, and you've got time to be adventurous and see more of Australia, then Australia has so much more to offer. You've got the Outback, um, Ayers Rock, Alice Springs, you've got the Great Ocean Road down to Adelaide that you can drive down, um, you've got Perth on the west coast, you've got Melbourne and a whole lot more. How do you get around Australia? Australia is massive, um, and there are many ways to get around it. It depends on your budget um, and how much time you've got. You can travel by bus, which is what I did. I travelled with Greyhound. There's also Premier Bus Company, which I think are a bit cheaper. And you've also got the Oz Experience, which is um, slightly more organised. Um, I will link them all below if you'd like to check them out. If you've got a bit more of a budget um, and you're lacking in time, then flying is a great option um, and gets you around Australia a lot quicker. Jetstar is a great airline to go with if you're looking for more budget flights and to travel internally in Australia. Obviously as well you've got the option of getting a camper van which is a pretty cool way to travel Australia. Um, it saves on accommodation obviously as you're sleeping in the back. Um, there are some hostels that let you park up for free but beware with camper vans. Um, you do have to pay for parking or um, pay to be on a campsite with them. You can't just rock up and park anywhere which obviously adds a cost even though you're saving on accommodation um, and obviously you've got petrol as well. Where do you stay? Like anywhere if you're backpacking um, there's hostels. There's hostels everywhere and we stayed in hostels. I didn't stay in any bad hostels. They were all clean. I took a sleeping bag liner with me um, thinking you know I need to cover myself from any bugs getting in and stuff and I didn't actually use it at all. On average in Australia I think we pay between 30 and 40 dollars um, and that's the equivalent of about 15 to 20 pound. If you're going in a peak time like we did over Christmas and New Year um, it's good to get them booked up because it gets very very busy. Over Christmas and New Year hostels can put up their prices like 10 dollars so beware of that if you are going to travel over the peak times. Hostel prices will vary depending on your location, um, so places like Sydney, places where you have to do less walking to get to the beach or to the main features of the town, but there's usually a few dollars in it um, and it's kind of worth paying the extra couple of dollars so that you're not walking and lugging your stuff all over the place. You can use websites like Hostel Bookers, Hostel World, um, Booking.com or just go to a local travel agent wherever you are um, and they'll book through their system and call them up for you. You can also do this thing called couch surfing which is a website um, and you sign up and basically you surf on people's couches. Obviously some people find that a bit daunting, it depends how independent you are, um, but it is a safe website um, and if you're really looking to save the pennies then that's a great one to look at. How long should you go to Australia for? This is a hard question because it depends on so many factors. Going to Australia it's a long flight um, and it's an expensive flight so you want to make sure you see as much as you can um, because it's not something you're going to do every year. I'd recommend writing everything that you want to see in Australia down, seeing where it is in Australia because if you've got something on the west coast and something on the east coast you've got to factor in like how long it's going to take to get across. For example from Byron Bay down to Sydney which looks not far, it took us 13 hours on the coach. As well, it obviously depends on the budget that you have. Australia isn't a cheap place to travel um, and if you haven't got much money, then it's not going to take you very far um, and you're not going to be there very long. Most people that you'll meet in Australia are on working visas. If you get a working visa, you know, you can work somewhere for a bit and save money, then you can travel to the next place and then work there for a bit um, and it just makes the whole thing less stressful and less like 
money orientated. I would say if you're going to do the East Coast from Cairns to Sydney, um, you need at least three weeks. I did it in four um, and that included a week in Byron Bay and a week in Sydney and I still felt like it was a little bit rushed. Um, there was places that I missed because I didn't have time um, and places that I wish I could stay a little bit longer. So doing it in any less than three weeks I would say is a little bit rushed um, and you might not get the proper Aussie experience. How much money will you need? Australia is one of the more expensive countries to travel in but you just need to plan for it. I knew it was going to be expensive, I made sure I saved um, and then it wasn't such a shock when I got there. If you're going to do activities like whitewater rafting, bungee jumping um, and the Fraser Island Whit Sundays trips, it will start adding up. I can't predict how much you're going to spend, um, it depends on things like how much you eat, how much you drink, um, how many activities you do. I can tell you how much I spent um, and that might give you a basis to kind of work around. My tourist visa was £14, my insurance was about £40, um, it's always a little bit extra to add on for those high risk adrenaline activities. The Greyhound bus pass, which is the hop on hop off bus service, um, I paid £219 for, which I think I got on a deal. If you keep an eye on the STA website, which is who I booked through, they like run deals and stuff. Spending money, I spent about $2,500, which is about just over £1,300. So altogether, I think I spent about £1,500. Um, in Australia for four weeks travelling, but that does exclude flights. Another thing to think about before you go is how you're going to carry your money around. You want to avoid bank charges. You can take your um, English card abroad, but obviously you get charged for taking money out and for transactions. Um, you could take cash, but obviously you, if you lose your backpack or something happens, um, you've lost your money. I decided to go with the STA um, cash card, which is a MasterCard. With the MasterCard, you get free transactions, so if you're paying um, over the counter or in the supermarket, the transactions are free. If you withdraw money from a cash point, it's 225 Then if the cash point has a charge, you add that on as well. So you just need to be careful you're not taking money out all the time. The good thing about Australia is it's developed, so everywhere has PIN machines. So I would recommend that if you're stuck with what to do. A few heads up slash tips for Australia. Free Wi-Fi in Australia is like gold dust. It's really, really hard to find. Um, the hostels, most of them make you pay and you don't really want to have to budget for Wi-Fi. Um, you want to spend your money on other things. You can get free Wi-Fi in McDonald's, Burger King, supermarket called Woolworths out there, but obviously you don't want to spend your time inside staring at your phone. Another option is to get an Australian SIM card which is actually less hassle than it seems. Um, I bought one from Woolworths which is a supermarket for $40 which is £20 um, and that gave me 2 gigs of data, unlimited texts and calls to Australian numbers and also $750 worth of credit to call back to the UK. So it was actually a really really good deal um, and I just put the SIM card in my phone, made sure my phone was unlocked and Bob's your uncle. Wi-Fi. Cotton On is Australia's version of like Primark um, in the fact that it's quite cheap if you want to buy clothes and they also sell plastic water bottles for like five dollars so it's well worth investing in one of them. Around Australia the tap water is drinking water um, and most of the time they have water fountains like dotted around so you do always have access to filling it up which will save you money. Your cheap supermarkets are Woolworths um, and 7-Eleven so if you want to save money and stock up on food or get snacks for along the way so that you're not buying and eating out then go to them. If you do go to a supermarket and you buy a pepper, you might not, but if you do and you're trying to find pepper and you can't find it, it's called capsicum. Sweet potato, same, it's not called sweet potato, it's called kumara with a K. I know that's the wrong way for you guys, this way, K. Don't freak out when someone goes, how's it going? I can't do the accent, is that Australian? <laughs> how's it going? Ha no. no, 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 that was really bad. <laughs> I went into a shop when I first got to Australia um, and the guy in there was like, how's it going? And I just stared at him. What it actually means is, how are you doing? You get used to it. Another thing that you'll come across in Australia is A and but. Two little words that Australians just add on wherever they fancy. It's good A but. Good A mate. It's good A. I'll work on the accent for next time. Goon. By the time you've left Australia, you will well and truly know what goon is. Goon is a way to drink cheaply in Australia. It is basically a sack of wine. You can get like three litres or five litres or seven. Um, so yeah, they're basically around $12, which is about six pounds. So if you're a backpacker, um, it's a cheap way to drink and a really classy way to drink. So deny it as much as you like, 
you will end up on the goon when times get tough and your funds run low. Things to try in Australia. Um, I'm not sure what's actually typically Australian. There's not, there's nothing like obvious. Ob well, there is. Like they eat kangaroo and they eat crocodile, which we don't do in England. I just didn't go out of my way to try it, and I didn't come across it on the menus. But maybe try that. Prawns aren't typically Australian. I'm sure they're not. But chucking a shrimp on the barbecue, or well, the saying "chucking a shrimp on the barbecue," um, is typically Australian. So if you go to Australia on the beach, get a barbecue and chuck a shrimp on. A can of Solo. I can't explain it, you have to go and try it for yourself. It's the first place that I've seen it, so I'm going to say it's Australian. Tim Tams. You won't be in Australia long before you come across Tim Tams. They are like penguin biscuits. I would even say go to Australia just to have Tim Tams because they are really good. Or just get someone to bring the Tim Tams back from Australia if they go because probably a lot cheaper an option. What are my three essentials for backpacking around Australia? There are lots of things that you need to take to Australia. Maybe one would be face wash because when you've been on like a really long bus journey, like 10 hours or something, um, and you stop off at a petrol station to get some food, there's always toilets and it's really nice to wash your face. And when you're in hostels and stuff or like on trips um, and you just want to freshen up, face wash is a lovely thing to have. Number two, I would say quick dry towel, microfiber towels I think they're cool and it honestly dries so much quicker than a normal towel so they're really worth getting, they're about £15 I got mine for, um, I'll link it in the description box below so if you want to grab one you can trust that mine is a good one. And number three, bikinis? You can't go to Australia and come back without a tan, can you? And in order to get a tan, you need a bikini. You pretty much live in bikinis anyway because you'll end up in a pool or the sea or whatever because it's so hot. So I would say bikinis are pretty essential. That is the end of my video. Undoubtedly I have probably missed out a few things so if you have a burning question or something that you're just clueless on then pop me a comment or pop me an email um, in the comments below um, and I will do my best to help you out. Even if you don't have a question leave me a comment anyway. Tell me how bad the video was or how good it was because um, I'll know better for next time. If you did like it then give it a thumbs up for me. Um, if you've got a friend that wants to go travelling to Australia, send them the link. I hope I have steered you in the right direction um, and given you some tips that are going to be useful. If you're undecided about going to Australia, go to Australia. You will not regret it. Save your pennies, book a flight, go to Australia, make some memories, have the best time of your life. Boom.